comes in and he's really cool and we used to talk all the time, John Caparulo, we'd talk about this or that and blah, 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 blah. And he was a funny kid and he would go on stage and everybody giggled and I used to giggle with fucking uh, D Duncan. Me and Duncan had him believing that if he wanted spots, he had to pay $15 a spot. That this is how we did it at the comedy store. And he was so naive. He was just a sweet kid. But one day he starts getting success and he starts... Duncan quits after they did the, the comedy store show on TNT. Remember years ago, TBS did the, the Paulie Shore and all that? I heard about it, yeah. Duncan quit. Duncan said, fuck you. I'm not being in no show. I'm not being in no show with Paulie Shore. So Duncan quit. So they made the phone guy, the fucking... Talent the, the coordinator. talent coordinator, which wasn't a good move on Mitzi, but she didn't have time to look around. Plus, the kid took the job for fucking peanuts. But after about two or three years, the kid's job went to his fucking head. And here's this Caparulo kid fucking with Tommy, you know, and they, they, they like each other and they're whatever means. And In 2006, I was fucking knee-deep in addiction, dog. I would basically go to the store to buy blow. I would do my spot and make a U-turn and go to either El Compadre or to the Martel Cartel and buy blow and go home. And I could see that there was something in the air that was different. You know, Joe Rogan was huge. He was coming off Fear Factor. He would pack the place every week with a fucking uh, MySpace in that day or whatever the fuck was popular in yeah, those it'd be days. Yeah, MySpace. It was MySpace, and he packed the place out. And I could tell there wasn't uh, a good feeling towards him. He was doing 40 minutes. Not on my end. I, I loved it. He would get me and Ari to go up perform and do 15 minutes, you know, and he would, he would follow us, you know. Like, he would go, I want to follow these two fucking guys because they make me work, you know. And things got started getting heated. And one day I'm sitting out in the thing. It's like October of 2006. I'm deep in addiction, guys. I'm about to get surgery on my neck, the fat ball I had on my neck. And I'm sitting out there, and all of a sudden, Joe Rogan's on tour with Tom Segura, Charlie Murphy, and the other kid from Michigan, and a really nice kid. John Heffron? John Heffron. And they're doing a tour. And I'm sitting out there, and Fucko comes up to me, Caparul, and he goes, hey, man, when your buddy comes back, he's trying to be cute. He goes, when your boss or your buddy comes back, he's not going to be able to do 40 minutes. And then Tommy came out. He said, did you tell him? And they were both giggling. I go, you know what? Both of you could go fuck yourselves. And I knew what time it was. They went away giggling, too. But I knew what time it was. I could see that something was a brewing. You know, uh, the night with the Paulie Shore thing, when TNT came to see him, they didn't make Rogan go up on stage. And then there was an argument between Paulie and this other manager and Joe Rogan. And I turned my back because I thought Rogan was going to knock him out. I wanted, if I had to take a lie detector test, I wanted to pass it. Were you looking? No. Did you hear the smacks? Fuck no. But Rogan <laughs> didn't smack those guys. Rogan is smart and he walked away. And that was the end of the conversation. So I knew it had something to do with just fucking people, the way they get. Comics are fucking little cunts sometimes. So one day I get a call from fucking Tommy, like January, before I do the surgery and on my neck. And he's telling me how Carlos came in there and bumped John, and that's not right. And I tell him, I said, listen, man, the last I checked Carlos on TV, he gets every right. Well, you're wrong. You're wrong. Caparulo's funny. I'm like, Cap's a funny guy, but he ain't funny than fucking Carlos, bro. And nobody knows who the fuck he is. So knock it the fuck off with that shit. Well, I wanted you to tell Joe. What they were trying me to do was to get Joe riled up. Eventually, I got Joe riled up on his own. And whatever went down with Carlos happened. I was not there that night. I was recovering from my next, uh, the surgery. And once I saw that fat ball that came out of my neck, it was the people talking shit behind my back. I could see that fucking comedy store. So I said, fuck it. I'm not going in there no more with those fucking espiritos malos. I just made up my mind two months before. Like that December, I'm like, I'm not going in there no more. Because I know I'm going to end up knocking somebody the fuck out, number one. You think you would have hit somebody? Jesus. I was close. So I said, fuck it. And then the Jeff Valdez thing went down. And I went back in there one more time, and that proved it. That I went off on him. A fight. The, new, the, the, the L.A. Times wrote a story about it. That I fucking called the guy out for being a creep. Another fucking creepy producer, Jeff Valdez. So I had made, that really pushed me over. Like, I hadn't been in there nine months. If I had any thoughts of being in there, they were done that night. And I just didn't come back. I wasn't banned or nothing. I walked out of there on my own two feet like a gentleman. But the whole time I'm hearing these fucking ramblings about this cunt Caparulo. I'm hearing these fucking little ramblings, how he's telling people they can't go up in front. Of, this went on for years. You know, Rogan was doing, that Friday, when they threw Joe Rogan out, the comics were supposed to do a walkout. 
But Mitzi Shore said if somebody walked out, they wouldn't get spots no more. So they bailed. So right there, my camaraderie belief in comedy went out the fucking window right there. And I told Joe a thousand times, don't even talk to those punk-ass bitches no more. But Joe's a nice guy. Me, I see him now, I say hello, but I know what they're about. You can't take these faggots into war because they're going to fold. So, go ahead. I hate to say, are you worried that some, that might happen with what you're what, what oh, talking sure. about now? Oh, well, sure. I really don't give because a fuck. Because that's the biggest. I learned that lesson early. Like, yeah, I really don't people, give a fuck. People will go, like, rile, like, rile you up, and then when it's time to time, fall. they you, all walk away. If you listen to the Carlos Mencia tape, they're in the back <laughs> jumping, yelling, screaming. Once it was time to bail up, nobody did fucking dick. So, but anyway, that's a complete different story. So this is going on over the years. I'm hearing this shit. I'm hearing that he's saying I'm not funny, that Tommy's saying I'm not funny. That Mitz, I was Mitzi's favorite, blah, 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 blah. So I didn't say it. And then one day, I stopped doing blow. And I started thinking about it. So like in 2013 or something, I was doing an interview, and I said it. I said, Caparulo's a fucking cunt. <laughs> and his buddy Tommy. I wasn't going back up. There. I didn't give a fuck. And what are they going to do? Come get me at my house? Is that what you think they're going to fucking do? They don't have the ball. Anybody who goes to a talent coordinator and tells them that you can't put somebody on before me, or after me. Then he started complaining about Bobby Lee going on after him. You know why? Because he was too funny. He wanted to be the star of the whole fucking night. He wanted people to leave at 11 and go, wow, that Caparulo is something else. So he wouldn't let Bobby Lee go up. Then he started on fucking Bill Crystalia. And then, you know, when, when Adam came back, the talent coordinator from the store came back, he had to call a bunch of other comedians to say, come back, Hannibal Burris. Al Madrigal, he called a bunch of comedians. Yeah, some of them had problems with Tommy, but some of them had problems because Caparulo didn't like him there. Caparulo felt threatened by them. He's that much of a fucking pussy. He felt threatened by them. And that's not what a comic does. A comic doesn't take money out of somebody else's pocket. Okay, I'm very hurt in two things that happened in my career. Once, I didn't book The Sopranos because Steve Sharippa went and talked about me to the producers. I didn't like that. I didn't get the job. He took money out of my fucking pocket. Somewhere along the line, you have to pay for that. That's karma when you take money out of somebody's pocket. Just like stealing. You're stealing. It's the same fucking principle. I I I feel I never give a bad review to anybody. Like an Uber driver. Like I I, I feel bad no. for that stuff. And I I've heard of people being like, I don't want to follow somebody, he's too funny. I've never heard of someone saying, I don't want someone to follow me there. That's, That's what he was doing. So, and, and, and listen, when somebody says they don't want you following me, that means you want to be the funniest fucking guy around. You don't want to be fucking threatened. So people left. People like, you know what? Like, a lot of people went down there, and Caparulo probably like, I don't want him down here. And sure enough, Tommy believed him. And trust me, I've heard those stories, too, of people going down there and being funny after him. And never get in a spot ever again, like till late night. You know, just a thousand shitty things. And Tommy did a thousand shitty things. Not only that, but he robbed the fucking joint. He got caught with his hand in the cookie jar behind the register. Here's a kid with a trust fund that was robbing. You understand me? So listen, both of them suck dick. Both of them are two dick sucking motherfuckers. So Rogan goes on his, I go on Rogan's podcast Christmas Eve, and I say the truth. Rogan's up there being a nice guy, saying, oh, well, the fucking guy, uh, you know, the comedy store, the computers, uh, why cool people go down. No, cool people go down there because Tommy and that cunt Caparulo don't go down there no more. So a couple of weeks ago, what's the fat dude from fucking the Goldbergs? Oh, Jeff Garland. Jeff Garland goes down there and bumps Caparulo. That's why you didn't see him for a long time. That's why he didn't, hadn't been down there because he was pissed about that. He was pissed about me and Joe being back down there. He was pissed about Magic. He was pissed about the lineups, bro. He's pissed about the heart of the lineups. This is a comic that's just at home. <laughs> you know, and that's all he's fucking doing. And have, like, haven't the lineups been great? You were the saying lineups that? are sensational. Yeah. And he's not on them. He's not on them because he ain't around. There's fucking smoke. There's fucking fire, guys. I'm not making this fucking shit up. This is not slander. This is a human being telling you what the fuck happened. Ari went up to him the other night and was like, you, this is what you did. He's still not coming to it. Do you understand what claiming responsibility is? If he would have just claimed responsibility, this would have been over. I don't even give a, I don't give a fuck if that little miserable faggot cunt gets hit <laughs> by a fucking car. I don't give a fuck. It don't matter to me. All I wanted him to do is to know what he did. Well, he starts up with me on Twitter the other day. And I said some shit. I went overboard, but I had to give it to him. Listen, Art of War, Sun Tzu. If the fucking guy you're going up against is about fucked up tolerance, 
agitate this motherfucker to no end. What agitates a motherfucker more? Roberto Duran. You know how he won the fight against Sugar Ray Leonard the first time? Oh. He walked up to him in Montreal and he said, I'm going to fuck your wife up the fucking ass. It got into fucking Sugar Ray's head so much that he lost the first fight. Put it on. Put it on. It's a true story about not. Don't put it on here. Put it on when you get home. True story in Montreal. First time Roberto Duran fought fucking Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray, nice guy of the year, walking down the street with his family. <laughs> <laughs> and he sees Roberto. He goes, let me introduce Roberto to my wife. Roberto shakes his hand and goes, I'm going to fuck your wife up the ass. It threw him off for two weeks. It lost the fucking fight. Lost the fight. Lost the fucking fight because you lose the fight in your head first. This isn't a fight. But I, I gain nothing by smacking this fucking punk. He's a punk. I wouldn't dirty my hands. I never intended to. I just wanted him to know and to fucking apologize. And if you're not going to apologize, then don't come to the comedy store no more. Don't come to the comedy store because now I arouse this. People know this. You know how many people fucking call me? And not animals. Nice white people call me. You know how many open mics hit me up and said, thank you, that that guy's a cunt? He's a cunt to us when he walks in the building? That dude's a cunt to everybody. So when Ari's talking to him yesterday, he's still not claiming responsibility. He don't do nothing, this kid. He don't do nothing. Why have him around? So I had to say what I had to say. I wasn't lying. If you watch the Twitter feed, he never accused me of lying. He did, nothing. He called me names. I'm grandpa, that I'm old, that I wasn't funny, that I was hanging on his jock when he got a deal. What deal? That was his fucking heyday. That was all he's ever done. Bitch, I've done fucking movies with savages. You know, for all the shit he did, he, nobody follows him on Twitter. He said I was irrelevant and not funny. This kid's a fucking punk. This kid's a fucking punk, and he'll always fucking be a punk. A comic, and then he started putting at the comedy store as a comic. Uh, what is that? A, artist colony. An artist colony. Well, then you should have acted like one. You should have acted like one. You never did. You think people are coming after you now and saying these things to you because they feel bad for you? I'm not bullying this kid. I got no reason to, but I don't give a fuck if this fucking maggot falls off a fucking bridge tonight and gets hit by a truck and then the fucking lions eat him to death. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. You know, I don't give a fuck. But the point is how he didn't claim responsibility. Everything was everybody else's. And now some of the comics have been happy from what I did, but none of them beside Ari are going to go up to him and go, hey, dog, you fucked up. Well, you know what's sad? This might be it. Might be bullying in today's culture. Like in in your world, it's just telling the truth. But now you can't even you can't even say the truth. Even Listen, I'm, I'm I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm no, no, saying, no, no, no. I know, and I know some people were upset by my comments. I don't really give a fuck if they were upset. I really don't. I really don't. I'm too old to get worried <laughs> about what fucking people think anymore. And if you're young, don't fuck. Who gives a fuck? You did it. It's done. This is how I feel in my heart. I'm not saying I'm going to smack the guy. I don't, dog, I got a beautiful wife and a beautiful family. I have a great time with you guys, and I have a great support group with you guys. I just wanted people to know, you know what, man? Aren't you sick and tired of getting conned? You liked Bill Cosby. Remember how you liked Bill Cosby? Remember how you liked Jared? He was sweet. You know, I'm sick and tired of you fucking people. Somebody didn't raise you right there. You can't judge character right off the bat. 